Hello beautiful people, it's your fashionista friend here, aka Patty, and today we are talking about something I never thought I'd make a critical video about, which is Emma Chamberlain. We are going to be talking about how Emma's stands are turning on her, and why. And I just want to say, I'm sorry if I sound kind of under the weather, that's because my allergies are killing me and I'm just trying to pull through, so please don't mind that. <laughs> So here's the agenda for this video. First, we're going to talk about how I noticed her stands turning on her. Then I'm going to read um, comments and posts from her stands and fans regarding subjects such as her spreading misinformation, being out of touch, acting fake towards her audience, and putting in little effort. Then I want to read the definition of selling out to you and then we will end on a discussion about what we've seen from other Emma Chamberlain fans out there. I also want to say that I am not trying to hate on Emma Chamberlain here. I have been a fan of hers since 2018. Do you guys like my look? This is inspired by like OG Emma Chamberlain. I remember she always used to wear these rugby shirts and I love wearing these as well. They're so cozy and comfy and then I've got this messy bun going. I hope you see where I'm coming from on this look and appreciate it. She has been at some point my favorite favorite YouTuber on the planet. I have a lot of respect for her and I don't want this video to come off as hate. I'd say I want it to be come off more as like a wake-up call to her audience and kind of just check in with like-minded people who also are fans of Emma Chamberlain. So let's get into the video. So first I want to start off on how I realized Emma's stands were calling her out and going against her. I want to take this back to summer of 2022. I had a Reddit phase where I was spending way too much time on Reddit. I had an account and one of the pages that I followed closely at that time was r slash Emma Chamberlain, which was pretty much a fan page for her. She wasn't affiliated with it. And during summer 2022, for the most part, if anybody said anything critical or constructive um, or negative about Emma, it wasn't well received by the other members. I I'd say stan energy there, you know what I mean? But nowadays, if you look at the page, there's a lot of criticism there. So many people were posting about how they didn't like the direction her podcast was going during the summer months that it got to the point of where they made a whole separate snark page for Emma. But now the snarky, critical, negative comments are coming back onto the fan page. I think it's because this emotion from her viewers is so prevalent. And so I want to talk about it because it's just crazy to see the vibe shift from like people shunning um, others from giving her constructive criticism a few months ago to now her fan page being full of criticism. I, I think it just goes to show that her fans are upset with her current behavior and so I feel like we need to talk about it. And I want to say none of the posts that I am going to be reading in this video are from her snark page. This is only from her fan page. So let's get into reading the Reddit posts. And please don't mind me if I'm looking away. I just want to get this word for word when I read things off. So let's get into the first post. This post is called question mark, question mark, question mark. Pretty well received. I don't get the appeal anymore. Her fashion used to be cool, but has morphed into this weird high fashion stuff that I never gotten while only occasionally wearing something that doesn't make me say WTF is this. And her personality, which was what the real appeal was for me, seems to be dead and has gone and replaced with a fake weirdness. Like, doesn't anyone actually believe it when she says, quote, I love you and appreciate you guys, end quote, at the end of her podcast. It comes off as not genuine to me. I loved hanging out with y'all. More like loved rambling on with no point in sight and just being paid a big bag of money. Sorry it's a harsh take, but I've tried to hold out that she didn't seem super shallow and would eventually bring back some substance to her content, but I just can't anymore. And I think a lot of people are in denial about it. And of course, people will 
will say she doesn't owe anyone anything, but it's seriously hard to have actual appreciation for people listening to your crappy podcast, question mark. She gives no substance because she knows people will listen and pay attention to her no matter what. Not sure why people are willing to stick around for her pseudo celeb shtick. She has so much potential with getting as big as she has and she chose to become a baby Kardashian. I agree with a lot of what they're saying here. It seems like she has pulled back from her audience, yet at the same time when she has her podcast, she kind of just rambles and has a word salad. And then at the end, she's like, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. But then still tries to cling on to that. What's the word that everyone calls it? Internet relationship. I forget what it's called. Of course, she's allowed to change and mature, but it's strange to see Emma have all these serious podcasts when she was known for being relatable and lighthearted, but now she's talking about mortality, religion, and like trying to be some philosopher. A lot of her podcasts recently kind of give me Cole Sprouse energy. I'm not like the other girls holier than thou vibes, and I'm sorry if that sounds mean. That's just how it's coming off to me, and as a long-term viewer, it's, it's sad to see her turn out this way. Here's another um, post. Okay, so I've finally come to the conclusion on how to explain Emma's shift. I use quotes because it's very obvious that people go through changes and, uh, hello, that's life. I'm quite literally a different person by each word I type. Just hear me out first. I am also aware that she has no idea I exist, nor does it matter. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so I feel like Emma's behavior is giving major cop-out energy. Clearly, this is what makes her happy good for her, but I don't like giving people attention when I feel like things are becoming disingenuine. She is still a queen, like I said, but let me finish. For example, not showing her face on YouTube and strategically planning the GQ video and pat pics with the new Chamberlain coffee mug, which clearly worked because I'm talking about it now. But it seems like she's so overwhelmed with her own secluded bubble with this new hire social status that any sense of normalcy she once had is completely out of touch with. Emma became who she was because she was admired and known for not giving a F. Truly being just vulnerable and open. Now everything is so perfectly executed and pre-planned at the cost of perfecting the image she wants us to see. That I looked up to growing up because I felt like everything was really unattainable. On the internet, a lot of people want to look like they have a perfect life. That's totally fine. And I think that's fun in its own way. But I just don't, that's something that I struggled with growing up having only perfect lives to look up to. That wasn't something I could relate to. I just think in this shift, she has lost touch of the reason her audience loves her so much, which I speculate why she is desperate enough to open up with her relationship. Like she's trying to do new things, but they're not quite sticking like her old content, and I don't think it's clicking to her why. I imagine she thinks she needs to either put on a different personality mask, whether it's the old or new Emma, rather than just being Emma. I I blame her trying to fit into these higher social scenes as well because she is in connection with these people. People now know maybe she feels she needs to accommodate her actions accordingly. It's almost like she's trying to give off Billy vibes. In a sense, Billy Eilish. In a sense of gate in keeping information to increase people's curiosity. I totally see where this person's coming from, and it seems like she is straying away from her original brand, but at the same time, Emma's a year younger than myself, and I feel bad because she is growing and maturing in the public eye, and people are looking at her under a microscope, and... I don't necessarily know if she's pulling away because she's like friends with Kendall Jenner and Hailey Bieber now, but maybe she's kind of afraid to show the audience who she is now because she's drastically changed from the person she was when she was 16, 17, 18. Even from her recent podcast, it seems like she's matured quite a bit or is trying to put on this new personality. It is um sad as a viewer to see her change so much, but also at the same time, that is life. Now we're going to get into the out of touch posts. And I don't mean to be mean or classist. I don't mean to be dissing on people who don't go to college. If you don't think it's the right choice for you, 
don't go, don't get into debt. I am not trying to say that everybody should go to college when I read this. If it's not for you, don't go. I support that and I think that's a smart decision. College isn't for everybody. Here's this post. Recently, I get that vibe that Emma's lack of college education or just education in general is coming to bite her in the butt. I read a previous post on this subreddit about a student of biology complaining about Emma Emma is promoting anti-intellectualism, giving an example of how Emma says flat earthers aren't hurting anybody and something stupid about fossils not being used to estimate what dinosaurs looked like. It was a really good post. It sparked a thought for me, though. As an English lit major, it made me realize that Emma has little to no critical analysis skills, and it's truly painful to listen to her talk these days because most of her thoughts are founded on nothing but a whim. There's no study, no time, no care put into what she says on those podcasts of hers. But of course, we've all heard her recently say that's because she's young. Her opinion is subject to change. Remember when she had an entire podcast on that? To be clear, it's fair to say your opinion will change, but when your opinion isn't based on much forethought in the first place, it does seem like a bit of a cop-out. I totally agree with that, especially when Emma talks about deep topics, and it's evident that she hasn't done much research on that. I find that offensive as a viewer, and it just a straight up cop out because if you're gonna preach about these serious topics, do your research. It kind of just seems like she wakes up, rolls out of bed, then gets her microphone, then goes back into bed to talk about these serious topics. And even myself, when I talk about dark things on the internet, I do a lot of research because you need to. Anyways, my point is, I can see her struggle to form coherent thoughts and sentences in her big intellectual podcast on religion and philosophy. She constantly talks in circles, takes unnecessary long breaks between words, and doesn't actually discuss what she means. Essentially, I think that's because of her lack of formal education, a space in which you are taught to break down these really big ideas into bite-sized chunks and analyze slash explain your thoughts. Her podcast is really doing herself a disservice. Instead of being entertaining, informing people about topics that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise thought about, being thought-provoking, etc, etc, she is just revealing how vapid and thoughtless her content has become. In her recent podcast, she said, if you find yourself constantly shooting down other people's beliefs or opinions because they don't align with your own, that makes them feel incorrect in your brain for whatever reason, or internally judging others for their views. You may still be somewhat of a know-it-all. Like, girl, what? What is this thought? It is encouraged, it should be encouraged to judge others if they are incorrect on account of many different things, especially when it comes to flat earthers, girl. What if someone has different political views than you? Are you genuinely more educated or have a more nuanced opinion because of your own personal experience? Does that make you a know-it-all or does it make you a knowledgeable person? As much as that critique might feel like nitpicking, I feel like it's a prime example of Emma's lack of critical analysis skills. Of course, she was unable to see her words, how her words could actually be constructed to mean absolutely nothing of worth. Although we can all understand how she is trying to act because of a lack of research and thought, her advice quickly becomes obsolete and misinformed. Key word here, misinformation. Her podcasts recently are full of harmful misinformation. Also, I think this person was saying she lacks formal education. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Just because you don't go to college doesn't mean you don't know how to form a concise thought and break things down into bite-sized chunks. I think it's more of that she hasn't done anything really. I don't know her day-to-day -day life, but it seems like she kind of just does photo shoots and stuff compared to like being in the workforce. Like people who work their traditional job, they learn those critical analysis skills and they learn skills that she isn't learning because she's not really challenging herself from what it seems like. And then this post is about some pointing out that she's been kind of fake lately. It bothers me when she says, oh, I don't have any friends, or oh my god, I grew up poor, or I don't shower, or just any statement that is untrue, just so she can make herself more relatable to her audience, or I guess to be quirky. It's annoying because I know she has friends and people in her life. She has an active social life, which is great, but it's wrong to just pretend. You don't know when there's people who actually struggle with that and makes them feel bad. I have a feeling that 
And that is kind of insulting to people who are actually struggling. Emma is like putting on this persona that she doesn't have friends and that she doesn't have a social life. Meanwhile, she's being invited to these red carpet events and having you know a-list friends and all this jazz like it's clearly a lie that she's putting on but maybe that's her just trying to grasp on to her past brand of being like a loner and her trying to just be straight up relatable but I do agree with this post and it also rubs me the wrong way now we're gonna get into Emma only posting online for the most part when it has to do with monetary gain. Like, I've noticed this for a while is like she doesn't post unless there's a sponsorship attached to it. And this person said three months ago, I feel like Emma's podcast was a ton of ads, so I decided to calculate it approximately. The first two minutes are ads. There is a six minute ad segment. There's another two minute segment. The l full last minute is self-promotion, which I don't calculate, but it is crazy, which means it's around 19% ads. After that 19% is removed, it is a podcast episode barely over half an hour, which is almost unheard of, and features no guests or visual element, and this was at the time, there was no visual element, or theme as seen on other podcasts. Not only that, her recent podcasts have revealed the shortcomings of her insight given her position and insulation. But I've definitely noticed that, and even on her Instagram, it's like all ads. It's barely anything personal. Another thing people are talking about recently is that, like, there was this whole com beautifully done commercial for Anything Goes, her podcast, because she had just gotten this big Spotify deal and this beautiful podcast ad campaign for the podcast came out. And then now the visual element of the podcast is pretty underwhelming. And I totally agree. It's kind of wild going from seeing this elaborate commercial done for the podcast and then seeing the new and improved video element. And the video part of the podcast literally reminds me of being in Zoom, like a Zoom therapy appointment or like in class for Zoom. Like it's, it's not, not a cool vibe. And the whole visual element of the podcast, I feel like is a huge cop out. Like Emma, I know her podcast vibe is to like be in her bed and relax and just kind of stream of consciousness. But at the same time, it does seem like minimal effort was put into it. When I watch the visual elements, it feels like I'm in Zoom university, like a Zoom class. She could have done more with it, like having better lighting and stuff. It does just feel lazy. I wonder how Spotify feels about this whole deal that's gone down. I'm very curious to, to see what they think. So now we're gonna go through her Instagram and look at her recent posts and see what's sponsored and what's not. We've got the Lacombe official a makeup ad. Cartier, Vanity Fair. I mean, she looks bomb in this photo, but kind of an, yeah, ad. Aritzia ad. Let's see, this post here looks personal. Then here's the elaborate anything goes advertisement that I was talking about. GQ ad, Chamberlain Coffee ad. Okay, this is personal. And here's what I'm kind of talking about, about her style kind of going downhill. Like that's, it's just kind of concerning to me, especially as someone who's also a fashionista. Like when my outfits go downhill, it's a sign that I'm not okay. And of course everybody is different, but... You know, it's just like a red flag when my outfits are not as cool or unique um, as they used to be. It's a reflection of my mental health, and I kind of feel like that's the same for her, but obviously I don't know. I'm not Emma Chamberlain, but it's just kind of a warning sign to me. Is someone who also struggles with anxiety and depression on a daily basis like she does. Alrighty, personal post, cool. Another personal post, okay, Emma, we see you. But it's also just, like, minimal effort still, you know? Like, just an emoji. I don't know. And, uh, let's see here. But I would say, like, a majority of her stuff is just ads. Like, I remember there was a point in when she was posting almost, like, every three days, once a day or every three days, was really on top of her Instagram game. So here is the definition of sellout. I want to think, is she really a sellout or is she just not okay? Selling out or sold out is the past tense is a common expression for the compromising of a person's integrity, morality, authenticity, or principles by forgoing the long-term benefits of the collective or group in exchange for personal gains such as money or power. I don't know if she's necessarily selling out. It just kind of seems like to me 
from the perspective of a longtime viewer that she doesn't want to be in the public eye anymore, or she doesn't want to engage with her audience anymore. It doesn't seem like she really wants to be on her podcast. She spews things out randomly with little thought or research done, which I can understand. It's hard to be in the public eye, especially when you're changing and lost in life and people want her to be one way, but she's growing into another direction. That must be very hard to deal with. And I'm also thinking like, I remember one time Emma opened up about how the whole reason she moved out was because she had a stalker. And that's traumatizing. I can understand why she might be sick of this public eye bullshit, but then at the same time, she's going from like personal content influencer to A-lister. So I don't necessarily know if she's done with being up in the public eye or if she's trying to transition to a more mainstream celebrity. But at the same time as she does that, it seems like she's been acting very out of touch and ignorant as she does that. Part of me thinks she's selling out because she isn't really giving her viewers much value when there's no monetary gain for her involved. That does give me sellout vibes, but overall, I just hope she's okay. I don't get the impression that she is okay. I just hope that, you know, she finds herself, she realizes what she wants to do, and that she gets better if she's not okay. Of course, I don't know her personally. I wish I knew her personally, but I don't, and I'm sorry that she's putting in minimal effort right now. I feel like that's a sign of her depression, but who really knows? And that's all I gotta say about it. Comment your thoughts below. Do you think she's a sellout or do you think she's just not okay? Or do you think she's done with the public eye? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let's be as respectful as possible to Emma. We can be constructive and respectful at the same time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you checking out my channel. If you want to check out me out on Instagram and TikTok, I have those here and linked below. Subscribe if you like this commentary kind of style. I usually post about corruption in the fashion and entertainment industries as well as a little bit of whatever else I want like books I like books anything goes here but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one bye